Welcome to Q&A Mondays here at MH News. I'm your host, Matt Haslam. Now, if you have a question for the show, please send them into questions at mhnews.info. You can also comment below on Facebook or YouTube or private message me on Facebook with all of those great questions. And like and subscribe to our channel below for plenty of great content to come, and we have episodes every Monday and Thursday, so look forward to that. Um, first question today comes to us from one of my good friends. Uh, basically, the other day he ran into me at the grocery store, and so I have to say, if you run into me in real life, um, certainly give me any comments you have for the show or uh, give me any questions you have for the show. I'm certainly open to that just around town, what, whatever I'm doing. Um, I'll certainly answer any questions that I can possibly answer while I'm uh, out and about and stuff like that. So come up to me and ask me. I'm not a scary person, I don't think. But um, basically this first question comes to us from one of my good friends who has his own YouTube show. And... Basically, it's a show about politics, so I really can't go into too much detail um, whether or not I like this show, and I really can't go into too much detail um, on whether or not I agree or disagree with what he says, because uh, my company works for both political parties, and so somebody would be mad at me if I said anything too much on the show. But what I can say is uh, some tips for him, because he's looking for ways to improve the production value of his show for free. And a lot of us don't have money to spend on our YouTube shows anymore because YouTube just changed their terms and conditions that if you don't make $100 in profit every single month, basically if you don't have hundreds of thousands of views or millions of views a month, then you're not going to make a penny from their AdSense uh, program. So basically a lot of us are cut out of the loop on the profits and I guess it's okay with YouTube. Um, I don't necessarily agree with that whole thing, but hey, that's the way it goes. So we don't have that much money to spend on shows. And so we're looking, we're all looking for ways to make our show for less money and ways to imp improve production value for free. So um, the biggest tips I would have are what I'm going to say right now. Um, basically, first, first off, come up with a name for your show. Because if you do a weekly YouTube show or whatever happens to be, you want to be able to think about your audience and think, you know, if you ran into a YouTube channel or something like that and you saw one really great video, well, it's just one great video. You might think, well, this person only can't, did this one video one time for fun. You know, you're not going to think they have multiple videos. So come up with a name for your show. That way you can say something like we do in the very beginning of every single episode. Welcome to MH News. I'm your host, Matt Haslam. That way, first off, you're inviting people in. Second off, you know, people know, hey, this is not just a one-time video. This is a weekly thing that they do. So basically, if you like the video, it's hard enough to get someone to click onto your video in the first place. So if you can get to the get them to look at other videos or click onto your channel to find other content because they like something in one video, well then, more power to you, but you need to let them know you have other videos. So come up with a name for your show. If your show is very political, I would come up with a political name um, or something like that. For us, we have MH News because we started off as actually an article a week. We used to write articles every single week on a blog and then we grew from that. And now it's just a new show of a lot of our episodes have to deal with the new equipment coming out. So um, that's kind of how it all got started. But for us, I think that's a good catchy title for our show at least. But you have to come up with your own. Obviously, I don't know exactly what your channel is for all you people around the world. So come up with a catchy name for your show and definitely use it in the show and welcome people into your show by saying it. Second tip I have is prepare your show in advance. And that doesn't mean you have to script out your entire show if you need to, if you're one of those people that need to. Certainly go ahead and do that. But um, you don't need to rehearse it over and over again. Sometimes we rehearse it just because we're dealing with HD video all the time. So we don't want to waste a bunch of footage. Um, but for the most part, you want to get that first 10 seconds ready and down. Because any YouTuber... YouTuber will tell you that first 10 seconds is vital to every single video you do. Um, if you don't capture their intention in the first 10 seconds, you're not going to have their attention at all. So typically what happens for YouTube is you have, uh, today on MH News, we're going to be doing this. And then 
you have the what's called a bumper, and that's basically the, like the title of your show with a whole bunch of graphics. And if you watch our Thursday episodes, you'll see we say, today on MH News, we're going to be doing this, really intriguing them into what we're about to do. And then the, the second half of that 10 seconds is the bumper with our title. And it also, in that bumper, says season two, episode 44, whatever it be. That way people know, hey, there's at least 44 episodes of this out there. So I'm going to go check out more of the episodes if I like this episode. So kind of that lets them know, hey, we're not just a one-time video here. And so that kind of is another benef benefit to the bumper. But at 10 second mark, you have to go right into your video. You can't go over that 10 seconds uh, as in an intro. So you have to go right into your video and that way it really intrigues them and they'll watch the rest of the episode if they're interested in that topic. So uh, that's basically a really important 10 seconds. You have to be really enthusiastic for that 10 seconds um, and you have to really know what you're gonna say for that 10 seconds. So there's that tip. And the next tip I have is have a consistent show. For instance, um, you don't wanna, basically if, if you watch the news, the local news or something like that, you can guarantee every single night at 6 p.m. there's going to be the local news on. You can guarantee it. Whether or not there's something newsworthy, a, a news story that's worthy enough to be on TV, that's a whole other matter. But you can guarantee something's going to be on at 6 p.m. So basically, you want to have a consistent show. People, as soon as they start liking your videos and stuff like that, they're going to look for your show every week at a certain time. Um, and you want to base that time frame off an existing show. So find a show that's very similar to yours, that's very popular. For instance, for us, we know uh, a lot of people that watch our show are filmmakers. Even though we deal with music and audio and lighting and stuff like that, uh, for the most part, our show is about filmmaking. And so we know other filmmaking networks on YouTube have shows coming out every Monday and Thursday. Every single one of them, uh, F Frugal Filmmaker, Film Riot, all these shows have a Q&A episode every Monday and a how-to every Thursday. So I know for a fact people are going on YouTube every Monday and Thursday to find filmmaking content. So I want to be part of that. I want to ride their coattails for a little bit until I have a big enough brand to step out of that and create my own day. So until I have my own, basically my own following, I'm not going to step out and try to do my own thing and blaze my own trail. I'm gonna try to ride somebody else's coattails that are very popular until I can have a brand for myself. So keep that in mind. The next thing I have is find a set location for your show. For instance, we've always been in my office here and uh, part of my set here is stuff that I use every single day and a lot of people have commented on this. Um, behind me is always very, very expensive gear and one of the things my friend actually commented about was the set looks very expensive. And it, yes, it is very expensive. We use multiple cameras, a Zoom H4n, we use Canon T5i, a GoPro Hero 3, we use studio lights in a grid work system above. Um, they range from like about, I think, $50 a piece to about $150 a piece. Um, we use Samson CO2 microphones, we use a laptop all the time. I use, you know, basically in my background here is a piano all the time. Uh, there's an amp rack back there, really expensive pieces of gear that, you know, road cases and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, people think, oh, well, all this stuff is here just for the show. And no, it's not. This is my everyday office that you're coming into for MH News. And so Basically, this is stuff that I use every single day at the office, and it's not just gear that I bought solely for the show. I didn't really buy anything at all just for the show, um, besides like a jacket which has MH News logo on it, but you know, that's kind of just an advertisement. But for the most part, all this equipment is stuff that I use on the road whenever we're doing a show or something like that or an event. Um, this is stuff I use in the office every single day, and we actually plan our episodes around when the gear is going out. So if I know the amp rack's going out for a sh an event or something like that, then I'm gonna do a couple episodes in advance. That way I can wait for that piece of gear to get back here in order to 
do the next episode. That way my set doesn't change too drastically too often. Um, so I have a set location for my show and my set, the backdrop, has a bunch of gear in it which relates to the filmmaking and the audio and lighting and basically the topic of our shows. So you want to have a set that matches the topic you're talking about. Don't just have a blank wall. Um, don't have a hallway in the background that people are walking through. You know, that's really amateur. Um, if you can at all do it, have like a corner of a room or some of that where two walls are coming in and basically if you're forced to use a webcam, um, you don't, I mean, that's the thing, like people think, oh, I need a camera, I need a camera. No, you don't. You really can use a webcam. It doesn't matter anymore. Um, you have to remember the most important thing about an, anything on the internet, you know, the content has to be intriguing and the content has to be accurate. Beyond that, you can have the worst video resolution in the world. Um, you, you know, for instance, you can have a 4K video with brilliant audio and a very inaccurate message that really isn't that interesting. Your video is not going to succeed because you don't have that message behind it. So I would concentrate right now on the message you're conveying and what you say more than the video resolution. So you can use a webcam if you want. Um, but basically draw an imaginary line from the camera lens to your face, through your head, and to the backdrop. And if you can plan it where the corner of the room is right behind your head, then that kind of, in video world, people want to be told where to look on a screen. So if you can plan it where these two walls are coming in and you're right at the corner of the room behind you, well then they're kind of told to look in the middle where you are. So that's really, really good idea for a set. Um, if you can, for a political show, I would grab some road signs or some of that, um, lawn signs from candidates that you support, and I would put them in the backdrop. Or I would find a road sign that says Republicans and one that says Democrats, and I would put a versus sign in the middle and I would say Republicans versus Democrats or something like that. You know, just to make it an interesting backdrop. Because you're, if you're just sitting in front of a blank wall, people aren't going to watch because there's not something else for them to look at while they're listening. So you want to have a very interesting backdrop that relates to the topic you're talking about. The next thing I would do is record audio separately, if at all possible. So uh, basically on any computer you have, even if it's a Mac nowadays, the mics on a laptop or a computer aren't that great. On the webcams, they aren't that great. So what I would do is grab your phone or some of that, or an iPod Touch or whatever you have, record audio on it, or if nothing else, get a microphone from Radio Shack or Walmart, plug it into the microphone input on your computer and that bypasses the in in computer mics and that way you can record audio through it and it'd be better than the microphones in the computer. But what I would do if you're using a webcam is I would find a location and I would tape off where your laptop is. That way your camera's always in the same spot every single episode. And that way once you get it perfect where you give yourself enough headroom, it's not cutting off half your forehead, that way you don't have to worry about that. You can just set it up with little pieces of tape on your table and that way you know hey I need my laptop right here every single episode I do and that way you have really good framing on your camera and you don't have to worry about it um, so it's a one-time setup and that's it the next thing I would and basically with that I would record audio separately and sync it up with a free video editor online which you can find uh, GoPro has one called GoPro Studio you can find that at GoPro.com um, there's other free ones out there that you can certainly use if you do a little bit of research. They're great little programs. They're not as great as Adobe Premiere Pro CC, which is $250 a year. Um, they're not as good as Magix Video Pro, which is about $80, one time only fee. Um, and even if you're a student or something like that at a local college or high school, then uh, that comes down to, I think, 40 and Adobe Premiere comes down a little bit. but there's no need to spend that much money if you're doing a regular news show. We do everything in 1080p full HD because first off, we're talking about filmmaking, so we kind of have to do it in HD. Second off, 
we do it in full HD because if we didn't, it wouldn't be consistent with our brand as a company. So we have to do it that way. Um, but that doesn't mean you have to, but I would definitely sync up your audio later and just clap before you begin your show um, somehow. If you can't do that, then it's fine. It's okay. But remember, the audio is more important than the video. So before you would go buy in a big camera, I would definitely invest in a little bit of audio at least. Uh, next, I would come up with a bumper. And what that is is basically the title before your show starts or in that first 10 seconds, you say, welcome to the show. And then it goes into the bumper and it just is a logo for your show and says the name of your show. That's pretty much all it does. But in that, it says, you know, season two, episode, whatever. So people know it's not just a one time thing. And uh, having a title in the very beginning of your episode lets people know, hey, this is not just a one time thing. This is a show. And you think about any TV show nowadays, there's always a title. There's always a bumper on it. So keep that in mind. The next thing you want to do is do a thumbnail. And this doesn't need to be fancy program. And I know sometimes we use really fancy programs to do some of our thumbnails. Uh, Monday episodes, we never do uh, thumbnails for anymore. But the Thursday episodes, we always do one. For instance, last Thursday, we did an episode on how to fake a gunshot scene. And the thumbnail for it was created with Microsoft Paint. Really, really, that's a free program on a computer. So, hey, don't think that it's a really expensive gear. Um, basically, it's just a title above a really interesting point in the show. Um, last Thursday, it was on how to fake a gunshot, and we did a little scope of a gun over the video, and that was really, really cool thumbnail for it. You want to basically think about what your audience is going to see on their uh, related videos feed on the right side of their screen. So you want to be able to say, hey, what are they going to look at? You know, what's intriguing to my viewers and what will they click on? Because um, if you if you just had a bunch of videos with somebody sitting behind a desk and that is your thumbnail on every single episode, people aren't going to click on more than one episode. Um, but if you have really intriguing photos there with some text on them and big letters, then you say, hey, all of a sudden that's a much more inviting show and we're going to leave a link in the description below to an episode one of another filmmaking network did called dslr guide um, they did an episode on how to create really great thumbnails for your videos and we're going to leave a link in the description below to that and you can use microsoft microsoft paint it's free um but if you plan on doing more than one episode a week then i would definitely come up with sub names for your videos so for instance we have Q&A Mondays we back in the day when we did five episodes a week we had Q&A Mondays mini topic Tuesdays product review Wednesdays uh, how to Thursdays and then podcast Fridays so every single day people knew exactly what they were getting into they knew exactly what they were gonna watch that day they didn't know the topic but they knew pretty much every if they wanted to see if people basically were interested in only our review shows they would only view the Wednesday episodes because they knew every Wednesday we're going to have a review show. Nowadays, we only have Mondays and Thursdays because we're getting busier now. But for the most part, people still know exactly what they're going to be watching. That way they can tune in when they want to tune in. So keep all that in mind. Um, the more you work on your shows and stuff like that, the more consistent you do your shows, the better. And I think at first it took me like probably what five six hours to do an episode of mh news nowadays it's taking probably about a half an hour overall from recording it to editing it and putting it out there maybe 45 minutes or something like that for a thursday episode but really really short amount of time and you know it's well worth the investment because the better your episodes are the more uh people are going to tune in so that's our tips for that and unfortunately we only got to one question today i'm sorry about that but definitely more questions in the future normally we try to do five or six in an episode uh, but this was a big question and i think it's a topic that a lot of people want to learn about so it was well worth our time today so if you'd like to see more of our episodes please jo join us every monday and thursday for brand new episodes and send your questions into questions at mhnews.info. You can also comment below on Facebook or YouTube or private message us on Facebook. You can also uh, 
private, you can also see me in real life and uh, come up to me and ask me any questions that you have, certainly, and I hope this helped. Uh, but if you have any tips that you'd like to share for my friend James, who does his own YouTube show and really wants to up production value without spending any money at all, because um, we don't have any money at all, nobody does, really, sorry, but if you want to help him out, certainly uh, comment below in the comment section and try to help him out. Thank you again, and join us back here every Monday and Thursday. Have a good one.